High above our heads, far beyond clouds and storms, there are powerful rivers of air racing around the planet. You can't see them from the ground and you can't feel them directly, but they decide where storms go, where cold air escapes, and why one region freezes while another stays warm. These invisible rivers are called jet streams. They shape winters and summers. They influence droughts, floods, heat waves and blizzards. And right now they are playing a major role in how the winter of 2026 is unfolding across the world. In this video we're going to break down what jet streams actually are, how they form and why their shape and position can completely change the weather underneath. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss any upcoming episodes. To keep creating these videos, we'd really appreciate your support. So, let's start with the basics. A jet stream is a narrow band of extremely fast winds high in the atmosphere, usually somewhere between 8 and 14 kilometers above the Earth. These winds almost always blow from west to east, and at times they can reach speeds of well over 160 kilometers per hour. Jet streams exist because Earth is heated unevenly by the sun. The equator receives much more solar energy than the poles, which creates strong temperature differences between air masses. The atmosphere constantly tries to balance those differences. Warm air moves toward colder regions and cold air moves toward warmer regions. But Earth is rotating. Because of the Coriolis effect, air moving north or south is deflected. Instead of flowing straight, the wind bends into a powerful west-to-east current. That is the foundation of the jet stream. Jet streams often form along the boundaries between major air masses. You can think of them as moving borders between warm and cold air. When those borders shift, the jet stream shifts with them, and the weather below can change very quickly. There are four major jet streams on our planet. A polar jet, and a subtropical jet in each hemisphere. In the northern hemisphere, the polar jet stream is the most influential for everyday weather. It usually flows around 60 degrees north and marks the boundary between cold arctic air and milder mid-latitude air. This jet stream strongly controls winter weather in the United States, Canada and Europe. When it dips south, cold air can pour into populated regions. When it shifts north, milder conditions dominate. The Northern Hemisphere also has a subtropical jet stream, which flows closer to 30 degrees north and sits higher in the atmosphere. This jet forms where tropical circulation meets the mid-latitude circulation. It plays a major role in weather patterns across the southern United States, North Africa, the Middle East and South Asia. Many winter storms in the Mediterranean region and the winter rain systems affecting northern India are guided by this subtropical jet. The southern hemisphere mirrors this setup. There is a southern polar jet and a southern subtropical jet. Because the southern hemisphere has less land and more ocean, the southern polar jet is often stronger and more continuous, especially around Antarctica. These jet streams drive powerful storm systems that affect southern South America, South Africa, Australia and New Zealand. Together, these four jet streams form a global wind system that redistributes heat around the planet. Jet streams do not flow in straight lines. Instead, they form large atmospheric waves known as Rossby waves. These waves create ridges and troughs in the jet stream. When the jet stream bends northward, it forms a ridge. Ridges tend to bring warmer and often drier conditions underneath 
because they allow warm air to move poleward. When the jet stream dips southward, it forms a trough. Troughs tend to bring colder and more unsettled weather because they allow cold air from higher latitudes to move south. The speed of the jet stream is just as important as its shape. A fast, relatively straight jet stream leads to more stable and predictable weather. A slower, more distorted jet stream allows weather systems to stall. This can result in prolonged heat waves, extended cold outbreaks, persistent rainfall or long-lasting droughts. Many extreme weather events are linked to slow-moving, highly amplified jet stream patterns. But the jet stream does not operate on its own. It is part of a much larger atmospheric system and constantly interacts with several major weather and climate patterns that influence how seasons unfold. One of the most important of these is the polar vortex. The polar vortex is a large circulation of extremely cold air high above the Arctic, mainly in the stratosphere. When it is strong and stable, it keeps the cold air locked near the pole, but when the polar vortex weakens or becomes disturbed, cold air can escape more easily and it will allow Arctic air to plunge into the United States, Europe and Asia. For a more in-depth video on the polar vortex, I recommend watching our video about it. The jet stream also works closely with El Niño and La Niña, which are part of the larger ENSO cycle in the Pacific Ocean. Changes in tropical ocean temperatures alter global pressure patterns, which in turn shift the position and strength of the jet stream. We also made two separate in-depth videos about El Niño and La Niña, which you can watch later for more information. Another important interaction is with large-scale pressure oscillations such as the Arctic Oscillation and the North Atlantic Oscillation. These patterns describe how pressure is distributed between the polar regions and the mid-latitudes. When these oscillations are in a negative phase, the jet stream tends to weaken and become more distorted, increasing the chance of cold air outbreaks and blocked weather patterns. When they are positive, the jet stream is usually stronger and more zonal, keeping cold air closer to the poles. In the subtropics, the jet stream interacts with systems like the Hadley circulation and tropical convection patterns. This interaction helps shape the subtropical jet stream and plays a key role in steering winter storm systems into regions such as the Mediterranean, the Middle East and South Asia. In these areas, even small shifts in the jet stream can determine whether a season is unusually dry or marked by repeated storm events. All of these interactions mean that when the jet stream changes, it rarely acts alone. Instead, it responds to other atmospheric patterns. During the winter of this year, several of these systems are aligning in a way that favors a more amplified and dynamic jet stream, setting the stage for the weather patterns we are seeing unfold now. Like in North America, where the polar jet stream is becoming more amplified, strong ridges are forming in the western United States, while deep troughs are developing over central and eastern parts of the country. These troughs allow Arctic air to move south, increasing the risk of cold outbreaks and winter storms. When storm systems travel along this temperature boundary, snowfall potential increases significantly. In Europe, the jet stream has shown a tendency toward more variable and amplified patterns, which can allow cold Arctic air to surge southward across the continent. This setup has already contributed to cold snaps and snowfall in parts of Central and Eastern Europe earlier this winter. Because the Atlantic jet stream is highly dynamic, Europe is likely to experience continued swings between colder Arctic air and milder Atlantic air during this winter, depending on how the jet stream positions itself. And across Asia, both the polar and subtropical jet streams are active. In East Asia, a strong Siberian high drives the winter monsoon, 
while the polar jet stream steers and intensifies cold air outbreaks toward China, Korea and Japan. And in South Asia, the subtropical jet guides winter storm systems from the Mediterranean into northern India, Pakistan and Nepal. These systems, known as Western Disturbances, bring important winter rainfall and mountain snow that help replenish water supplies. And in North Africa and the Middle East, the subtropical jet stream plays a crucial role too. When it dips south, Mediterranean storm systems can reach the region, bringing rainfall and cooler conditions. Jet streams are not only important for short-term weather forecasts. They are also increasingly studied in the context of long-term climate change. Rapid warming in the Arctic may reduce the temperature difference between the poles and the mid-latitudes. If that difference weakens, the jet stream may become more prone to slower movement and larger waves, increasing the risk of persistent weather extremes. Scientists continue to study these connections, but it is clear that jet streams play a central role in how climate variability expresses itself at the surface. The jet stream is invisible, but its influence is everywhere. It decides where winter arrives early, where storms stall, where heat lingers, and where cold suddenly breaks free. From the United States to Europe, from Asia to the Middle East, the winter of this year is being shaped right now by powerful rivers of wind high above us. Once you understand jet streams, weather patterns start to make sense. You begin to see why temperatures swing so dramatically, why storms intensify and why certain regions experience extremes while others remain relatively calm. If you found this video useful, please like and share this video and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate your support. And if you'd like to go deeper, check out our other videos on El Nino, La Nina and the Polar Vortex. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.